We're here at Copper State, combined this year with Buckeye Airfare. And it looks like an exciting event getting started here, Blue Skies. And we got a pretty green machine here and a pretty red machine behind us, built by this gentleman I'm speaking to. I'm Dan Johnson, talking to Denny Reed of Wild Sky Aircraft. And you have a, a rather unusual looking trike. This is a pretty brute looking trike to me. It looks like <laughs> it could handle some real uh, off airport conditions and so forth. Tell me what your idea is behind designing this trike, Denny. Well, there was a lot of ideas behind it. Um, it took about eight years in development. Is that um, right? But four of those years was just spent experiencing, you know, hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars of other trikes that we continually bend or either in a constant state of decomposition. Uh, <laughs> I never really wanted to be a trike manufacturer, uh, but we needed something that was more specific purpose for, uh, you know, taking other hobbies that people do and taking them to another level. One of the things I enjoy doing, I enjoy archery, I enjoy hunting, fishing, um, and I never really came into aviation with an aviation background. So when I first saw trikes 18 years ago, um, you know, I said, you know, there's a way to take hobbies I already have, my friends have, my colleagues have, and then take it to another level, maybe out beyond the ATV track. The trike platform is the is the is the portable utility aircraft. And but if we if there was one specific trike that was perfect, we wouldn't have an industry, right? I partnered with a few people, Clyde Poser, who is an examiner at DAR, he's a machinist, he's a number one captain for Hawaiian Airlines, and nobody's more critical than Clyde Poser. And when he and I started <laughs> drinking a little tequila and orange juice together, we started talking about, all right, what, wh if we could build something that could last literally a lifetime, that would, I guess, withstand the abuse that we put on without sounding irresponsible, what would it look like? How would it be made? Uh, this construction, it, it just looks, everywhere I look, it looks really brutus and strong and, uh, you know, nothing wrong with other ways of building trikes or any kind of aircraft, but this one looks like an ATV more than most aircraft do. That was your mission? Well, we tried to go even beyond ATV. This aircraft you can tear apart completely in two days. And you can start, you can, you can dip it, you start from that same airframe, and there's no reason that this aircraft shouldn't last someone a lifetime. And so we, that's the way we wanted to pursue it. So beyond ATV, more into how's a carbon cub built? How is an off-road Jeep built, a crawler, you know, for real performance motorsport that wants to last more time than just giving it abuse? What is really value added over time? I see. Okay. Well, it looks like you've achieved that. Now, you said you've got uh, a few of these out and you've got a pretty good order book for them. We tell do. Me, tell me some numbers, please. Right now, we have 27 kits on order. All right. We want to be small volume, uh, 12 to 15 planes a year, but we want to support the kit world. We really do. That's where that's where like sport is experimental that's kind of the foundation we built what kind of construction project is it? I looked at your manual they have a very <laughs> handsome manual I'm, I'm impressed with what I saw not not about actually using it and building one but what I saw visually presented and the way it was presented looked very well organized to me Thanks. you said every single rivet's got a picture and an explanation it does. we we took that manual and we said okay how are we gonna do this for ages three and up but how do we take this to where people are not afraid of the time involved with a kit? Shopping for an aircraft is fun. Learning to fly is fun. Flying is fun, but so also should be the maintenance and the assembly. So when you're coming, our market is probably 90% new warm wallet packing bodies off the street, how do we make those people not only comfortable with the new lifestyle, but how do we make them comfortable with putting the aircraft together and learning our language and being competent even to solve problems maintenance wise? So that's where I really wanted to come in and not just sell another toy or a novelty. Let's really start a lifestyle with somebody that fills in all the facets that you need to really be a safe, effective pilot. So a buyer of a Wild Sky, what, what's the model? Wild Sky is a brand. What's the model called, Denny? <laughs> we call it the GOAT for a myriad of different reasons. The GOAT. Okay. Yeah, the GOAT. <laughs> I, grew, right. I grew up in a farming community, and uh, I can tell you that nothing is more uh, fundamentally durable and indifferent than a GOAT. And <laughs> <laughs> well, I did not know that, so I'm not I well was, versed on my goats, We weren't I guess, looking for anything <laughs> romantic, and clearly we don't mind ugly, so um, maybe... I, you, you know, <laughs> I wouldn't call it ugly, but I would certainly call it utilitarian, I guess, is yeah, the word I would have. Yeah, and we, it looks, we, it, it just everywhere I look, I see <laughs> detail that uh, um, impresses me with... Wow, you thought that part out a lot to come up with that particular construction at any point I look, so that's that's impressive. 
All right, so that's an interesting philosophy, Denny, about uh, about the goat from Wild Sky, uh, that you want people to be involved to the extent that they assemble it and then they know their aircraft, which any home builder will tell you. Yeah, that's that's pretty true. When you're done building the thing, you know every you know bit of it. You bet. So, Tell me a bit about the process. Uh, I see a lot of weldments, for example. I see what looks like aluminum weldment, maybe. I see, definitely see some steel welding. Mm -hmm. uh, most people aren't ready to do that. Uh, tell me how you handle it for them so that people can actually put it together. Sure. You know, it was pretty obvious when we started that there were different people with different levels of mechanical aptitude. And we didn't want anybody to feel like they had to fabricate. Um, there are some places where we typically will drill a pilot hole, then you follow drill it, but everything that you would receive in a kit has already been pre-powder coated. So uh, if okay. you decide right. to choose so you don't your have to do any yeah, of that, because you don't have to do any of the welding, notching, coping, any of the dirty stuff uh, that involves a lot of cussing, we already do all that. <laughs> so, yeah. Sounds like this is more of an assembly kit then. Put we do. And and most of it is C. assembly, yeah. And but from you know, depending on people want to go a, a LSA experimental kit, or if they want to go all the way to experimental amateur built, the kit is designed to make anywhere where you have to fabricate. It's designed to be fabrication friendly. It, you know, the the, okay. the dimensions are given, the call out, the locations of things. It's something that people with a very simple set of tools can do. We have two different options. We can do stainless steel 304, my personal favorite. It's a little bit more expensive, but it's um, that's that everybody knows 304 stainless steel, and it's uh, it's maybe a little bit softer metal. It definitely weighs more than the 4130 chromoly. Oh, does it? Okay. Yeah, but you know, in that environment where you just don't want to spend all your time being a a, a, you know, a constant caretaker of an aircraft. That stainless is something that looks brand new with a, you know, with Scotch Bright, you know, and it'll stay that way for years and years. It works great in humid environments on floats for certain. Um, but you know, chromoly is lighter. It's got a higher shear strength. Um, so it depends on what people like, what they want. Okay. Um, so different people tend to approach it differently. Uh, we do have Kestrel Aviation Services that actually helps with and does our builder assist. So if somebody doesn't necessarily want to take on the project all on their own, but they want to go somewhere like Sedona, Arizona, and they want to live for a couple of weeks and put their kit together, Kestrel Aviation Services does that for all us. Right, well, let's bring them in and introduce your uh, associate here, and let's uh, ask some questions about yeah, that. Yeah, this is uh, Sid Lloyd of Kestrel Aviation Services. He's been a kit builder since before the earth cooled off, and uh, <laughs> you know he's really the earth cooled off. In, <laughs> that goes back a little ways. You don't look quite that old to me, but. Uh, well, I said, uh, tell Thank me a little you. bit about this process that I was just asking Denny about here uh, for a builder who says, okay, look, this is, this is cool. This is just what i got to have. The philosophy that Denny espoused at the beginning of the video sounds like maybe that matches up perfectly. But then the guy or gal goes, mm, I don't know. Looks yeah. looks kind of like I don't know if I'm up for that. Yeah. So, so my, how do you handle that? Too? My, my background, I uh, built a Cozy Mark IV. I built a Glass Star <laughs> kit. And I built... Um, a team air bike. Okay. And since then, I became a light sport repairman, so I've done a lot of uh, repair and, and work on aircraft. And, uh, you know, I, I got to say that of all the kits I've worked on, the uh, Wild Sky Goat manual is probably the uh, the best manual I've seen. It is mostly an assembly where you just drill out the holes, put in bolts, and as you go through the manual, you just sign off every picture, basically. Ah, ah, okay. do, you, do you have an example of how simple the manual is? They'll have a picture of drill a 1 8 inch hole. Then they have another picture, widen it out to 3 16 And then another picture, widen it out to 1 quarter inch. And, and, I mean, that is literally how step-by-step how step the manual is. Yeah, it's a big, thick manual, and I it can is. appreciate that it probably has all that detail in yeah. it. Of course, I didn't know that myself, but that's interesting to hear, Sid. Yeah. So, in addition to uh, describing that about a builder doing this that is all on their own, yeah. you also give some assistance in a, in a build yeah. assist Absolutely. situation. Tell me a little bit about that. Uh, kind of to whatever the builder wants. So, the builder can work with us in assembling a kit, or if they want, the builder can have us assemble assemble the kit for them. Okay. Uh, when somebody comes to you and they say, look, uh, I, I really don't want to do too much of the building at all. Are you uh, special light sport aircraft approved? Yeah, we are. Uh, I think we were the first ones to get an audit before we released an aircraft. Yeah. And one of the things that we we had some so we had some clients that were actually discouraged by the delay, but we refused to release any aircraft until we'd been through the well, audit program. Good on you. Good on you. So yeah. FAA's been out. I, I know how that goes. They come out <laughs> with a bunch of laptops and several guys and really look oh, carefully. It came uh, with five. It was uh, it was it was pretty interesting. Yeah, and they they uh, look at everything, don't they? They now, they do. 
too. They really scrutinized the distance between those end numbers. <laughs> <laughs> Among other things, yes. Yeah. Okay, so you have SLSA approval. That means you can have, yeah. you can sell them fully built if you wanted to. You can fully build it. And right. It. You, that may not be your business mission, I understand. It's not, but it's but not you have we permission do. to do that. Correct. Which means you can do an ELSA then, which means the guy can do anything mm -hmm. he wants. Sure. And can maintain it afterward if he has credentials right. like Sid has or goes and gets the training necessary for that. Then you can do virtually anything you want, which means they could swap out engines or anything else if they wished. Yeah. Of course, then it can't go back to an SLSA uh, for right. people that don't know that. But but you have the other option, which is experimental amateur built, which is the so-called 51% sure. rule. And you can yep. do any of those things. Right. And you do all of those things now with yep. Sid's help, right? That's correct. Okay. And yep. uh, you and Sid are located here in uh, Arizona together? Yeah, Sid is up in Cottonwood, Sedona area, and I'm in Scottsdale, Arizona. Okay. So right. we're trying to keep it sunny. Yeah, that's uh, that's you're you're not exactly what right next to one another there, <laughs> but you're close anyhow. Yeah. And uh, you, and you're doing all the fabrication work. The part that you do, you do here. And yeah, we do. Uh, we we know every nut, bolt, and washer, square centimeter of this. We do all of it locally. We keep our lo overheads low, which I think we're, is allowing us to deliver considerably more trike for you know less money than most competitors. But at the same time, this is something we have to be low volume on. I think the most we're ever going to see on production, the way we're staffed right now, is maybe 12 to 15 a year. Yeah. So we do like to spend time with the clients before we commit to a sale or an instruction package I like to spend more time with people uh, so uh, and besides I mean these are kind of lifetime relationships and uh so we're going to stay low volume. <laughs> so uh, so at, at 27 in your order book, yes. uh, you've got a couple of years worth of uh, work to we do. We do. I don't know, I don't know uh, how, we can't do any building really until probably December of 2020. Um, but I mean, that's what's been so nice about Kestrel is that they have availability and you know, he's faster than we are as well. So, um, you know, I really, I recommend on the building side and services to, you know, find a factory pro that, that we use. You know, the people that we have in our network, I mean, they're, they're the best in the industry, like I said, from off-road to racing, uh, motorsports, um, we we consulted in the aviation side. You know, mostly aerobatic and backcountry aircraft. You know, we weren't we weren't trying to build a novelty here. We really wanted something that was a lifetime machine for for being abused. We wanted to definitely have something that was not airport dependent. And I think we all know that there's a skill set that goes with that as well. But that that's a fun pursuit of that skill level. So uh, you can't use it irresponsibly. Certainly. Thank but, you. You know, we definitely wanted something. That, that could last a lifetime and just was not airport dependent. We really want to focus on more on rural areas, especially as ADSB comes into compliant. Our demographic is not necessarily interested in the tracking device. They want to operate from their own airstrips. Sure. Um, they want to be rural. They got their own dreams. Well, so you're out here in a part of the world is. where that's uh, very much part of the culture, as far as I understand it. So. <laughs> All right, Denny, that's a lot of great information about your handsome trike here. Uh, tell me how we get even more or how people contact you with additional questions or maybe to buy. Where you know, we send you on the web. Yeah, I, we're pretty easy to find. Um, well, trikeschool.com is, is where we do used trike sales and we do our flight school. So trikeschool.com. Okay. Uh, real easy to remember. Under Wild Sky, if you're looking for something specific, the our website sucks still right now, so feel free to just call me. Uh, but that's wildskyaircraft.com. Okay, well, give us a phone number too since you invited that. That's easy. 509 990 5060. All right, very good, Denny. Well, thank yeah. you for joining us here to talk about the Wild Sky GOAT. Uh, you can Thanks, find lots Dan. more about all kinds of aircraft in this range, including many <laughs> kinds of trikes and all sorts of other things on bydanjohnson.com. Thanks for joining Denny Reed, Sid Lloyd, and myself here at Copper State and Buckeye Airfare.